Broward uh, Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council, and uh, we are in my lovely Cooper City, Florida home, and uh, I have 107 fruiting trees and to my jackfruit collection, which I have 15 of. Uh, the first I'm going to start with is one from our friends at uh, Excalibur Nursery. This is an Excalibur Red. Um, this is I. This is only a few years old, so I do not have a, any fruits on this tree as of yet. It's getting close, but allegedly this produces a beautiful, crispy jackfruit that is uh, reddish inside, which is supposed to have a very great, unique flavor. I can't speak to it because I don't have any um, fruits yet. Right next to him is another jackfruit I have, which is a very popular one, which is also, I don't have any fruits on it, which is an um, MAI1. Uh, it's a very top, popular uh, Thai uh, variety of fruits. As you can see, I have some male flowers, so that's a good indication that next year I should have some female flowers, because on jackfruit, there's male and female flowers, and the female flower is the one that produces the fruit. The male, like most things in nature, and I guess maybe in humans too, uh, uh, all the male is good for is producing the pollen, and that's about it. So you unknown uh, jackfruits that I have growing in my yard. Um, I figure there's no nothing wrong with taking a chance. This one I'm going to call uh, Jimmy Jack because my friend Jim uh, Trainer gave me this uh, jackfruit. They were throwing it out at the Rare Fruit Council because it was a little bit beat up and needed some TLC. I TLC'd it. It's what I do. Hour or two on here, so uh, you know it, it's worth a shot. It, it cost me nothing, and uh, except for some time and hard work and I have plenty of that to go around. Um, also uh, another um, thing I want to point out is this is a seedling I got from Dr. Snow. He came and um, he's a, a, a great cardiologist and uh, and I guess his passion is um, fruiting trees and his specialization I think is jackfruit and patayas, the dragon fruit. So um, this is a little seed he gave me. It was called tangerine and it did have a rich orange um, look and, a, and even an orange type of taste that was on a jackfruit. And if you never tried jackfruit. Jackfruit was the inspiration. It's the world's largest fruit, first of all. They get to be 80 pounds. Not really so much in South Florida, but like over in um, Malaysia and, and, and Asia, they get to be that big. And uh, it was the inspiration for Juicy Fruit Bubblegum. So if you can imagine that explosion of flavor um, that you get from Juicy Fruit Bubblegum, that's pretty much what you get from a jackfruit. The reason it turns off most of us gringos is because of the texture. So the texture can range from very crispy to very soft and almost like pliable and that turns a lot of people off even though the flavor for most of them is pretty much good. This jackfruit um, I'm not sure if it is a I got it from Richard Bolt who is the um, our president of the uh, our ex-president of the uh, Broward Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council. Uh, he gave me a seed and I grew this from seed. One of the nice things about jackfruit is a they come 90 percent true to seed so if you really like the mother chances are that seed is going to produce 90 percent close to the mother's DNA. So if there's a great taste in jackfruit, it'll be a great taste in baby. So uh, I grew this and he wasn't sure if it was a black gold or an NS1. So I'm not sure if this is a black gold or an NS1. I only had one fruit on it. For being a big tree, it's a really shy uh, bearer. But then again, that could be my fault and maybe not getting enough sun. All right, this is another jackfruit that I really don't know the, the name of, but I just would nick, nickname this one prolific and good. So uh, this is the second season. It's had a great crop on it. It is not a huge tree, and last year I had about 12, and this year I'm on track for more than that. You can see these beautiful specimens of jackfruit, um, and these will get to be about 25 to 30 pound fruits. Um, it is great. It is a rich yellow. It's very crunchy. It does have that reminiscent juice fruit gum taste. Um, this is a labor of love with jackfruit though. They produce a lot of um, um, they're a lot of uh, latex in the fruit and it is a little bit of a hassle to clean them because they do have a big seed inside of it but some people eat that seed by boiling it or roasting it and it's supposed to be reminiscent of a chestnut but it is a food source in some other countries not so much here in the U.S. But of course you know as, as growers you know if someone tastes your jackfruit and they like it well they're going to want some seeds because they know that that 
becomes 90% true to seed. So this is a great tree. Um, I do like it. It produces several um, jackfruit. I think I counted 24 of them. I, uh, I'm sorry, 14 of them. I hate to count them because then I'll see one on the ground and I get freaked out. This particular jackfruit also is very fragrant, so I don't even really need to worry about when to pick it. I can smell when to pick it. Um, so I'll walk by the tree and I'll have that strong, sweet, sweet smell of juicy fruit bubble gum. And that's exactly what it smells like. But brother, when you smell that, you better be picking it because if you can smell it, those animals can smell it. So this is a, an unknown cultivar, but very good. Also, I want to point out that in most of my trees, I do put pataya in, which is dragon fruit. Um, I just use the tree as a support structure. And, and this is a unique plant. It looks very cactus-like. It produces one of the most beautiful flowers you will ever see and smell. The flower is like one foot by two foot. It's open at night for one night, but it is a heavenly aroma. And the, ja and the uh, dragon fruits that are produced are not bad tasting. Some are better than others, but it really the flowers are spectacular. So I recommend you do that. Here's uh, two more uh, in my jackfruit collection, and I actually do know the cultivars of these two. This uh, one over here to my right is a china, which is a com uh, which is a cross between a jackfruit and a champa deck, which is in that same family. Over here, you can see the fruit, so um, I'm anxious to uh, to try that out to see uh, what that tastes like. I'm not sure if it's going to be soft, if it's going to be crunchy, uh, if it'll have a good taste or a bad taste. But again. You know, I tried it. Uh, I have the tree in here. I right on my left is a very small but very popular fruit called a Borneo Red. Chris Rollins brought this back, I think, from Malaysia. I have uh, one fruit on there. You can't really see it because it's hidden on the backside that I'm praying comes to fruition because even people in the Rare Fruit Council who are fruit nuts, even more than me, uh, talk about this and they say that they have never tried a Borneo Red type of fruit. All right, this is a um, uh, poppy jackfruit. Um, it is a good, uh, nice little tree. Uh, I don't know if you could see there's, um, there's actually a jackfruit produced right here. Um, I'll just move that branch out of the way, kind of show you. And this is another, you could tell that's going to be a female flower by the size of the pod. So there's no male flower here. The male flowers get to be these wimpy, long, thin ones, um, not that big bulbous right there. So there's another female there, another one there. So I'm going to have a good uh, jackfruit crop on this tree. And when you dehydrate this fruit, that soft textured jackfruit becomes the perfect texture for jackfruit chips. It almost becomes like a taffy type of consistency. And everyone loves it. Everyone I gave that chip to loved it. Everyone Everyone I gave the jackfruit raw fruit to, they didn't like it because it was soft. Everyone I gave that jackfruit chip to that was dehydrated, they loved it because it, it, it will condense it down. It removes all that moisture. It's in there for like I think about 24 hours and then all that moisture is removed and it adds to that consistency. It gives it body and it enhances the taste and it's really good. This is a uh, J31 uh, jackfruit which is a great jackfruit um, from uh, Malaysia. Uh, you could see I have a male um, flower here. You could tell that's a male by there's little pollen grains on it. I don't know if you can see that on the video. It's very fine and that's all his job is. You could see that this was a female flower and has now become a fruit um, and this one I'm gonna say is a male as well you can usually tell the female jackfruit right away the flowers they have a strong and they really do call this an annulus right here and that has to be a strong that ring has to be strong because it has to hold that you know 20 30 40 pound fruit right whereas you don't have that strong ring on either of these so those are probably just male flowers I'm a bit disappointed in this tree it is a great Great taste. However, it is a shy bear. Uh, my newest, uh, uh, one of my new additions, I should say. Um, it's an orange crushed jackfruit. Um, it's a it's a great tasting jackfruit. I think I've had it before. Uh, but um, the problem is, is I put them in the ground only only a few months ago, and it will be a couple of years before I will get jackfruit. Fruit has to be stout enough to hold the weight of that massive fruit, that massive 20 plus pound fruit. 
This is a uh, Sweet Fairchild uh, jackfruit that I have here. You could see what I was talking about, about the male flowers. Uh, all they do is they produce the pollen. I think you can see it. Can you get that, Cindy? Where all they do is produce the uh, pollen and, and then they're done. Now next to him, it looks to be a female flower that's going to come out of that, that little uh, pod right here, pointing with my elbow, um, that that should be a female flower and it should produce a fruit from that female flower because I have plenty of male flowers on here. So I anticipate that that sweet fair child, this is the first year that I'll get a, a, a fruit off of this. It's supposed to be a great sweet tasting fruit. Uh, this is uh, one of the prettier jackfruits I have. It's uh, called Golden Pillow. I've had, have, I've harvested fruits off of this before. It is a wonderful, about a 30 pound, uh, uh, yellow, crunchy, uh, beautiful tasting fruit. Um, through my Better Living Through Chemistry experimentations, you can see that I was able to produce a lot of male flowers on here, but not a single female flower. I'm, I am hopeful that this little pod right here might be a female flower down here below. So, um, and you can see the male flowers that were dried up. All right, so this is um, the last jackfruit on my jackfruit tour. I have this in my front yard as well as the um, the golden pillow one. This is a Fairchild Small, which, uh, as the name would uh, indicate, produces a nice small uh, jackfruit. You can see um, some male and female flowers down here on the bottom. I'll try to direct with my boot. Excuse my rudeness. This is a male flower. He's just going to produce pollen and dry up and die. And this in the pod should be a female flower. I do like this for the front yard because people expect the jackfruit to be really big and, um, you know, might be sniffing around to steal it and since it's so small, I'll harvest it before they know it's ready. Hey, I, uh, as, a, as, as a good papa, I should know all my trees, but I don't. This is actually the final jackfruit I have. I put a little seedling here in my swale uh, tree, but um, I needed a swale tree to replace a, a citrus that went bad, and I said, well, why not put this jackfruit seedling? I'm sure I will never see any fruit off of this, being as it's in the swale, but I think it would be a good thing for the residents of Cooper City to see that, you know, a lot of people have never seen a jackfruit, and to see a fruit that big grow on here, I think it's going to create quite a spectacle. So here in my front yard, um, I'm going to skip the jackfruits and I'm going to skip the um, the uh, mangoes, of course. So over here, I have a um, what I was able to keep a relatively small. This is a Malabar chestnut. It's also called a French Guyana peanut. Um, if you go into the stores, this is like sold as a bonsai plant or a good luck plant, right? So um, it requires a lot of trimming to keep it small. It is neat. Um, it does produce a nice. Um, a nice little nut. It has a beautiful little flower on it um, and it's really good. This is a great ground cover. This is called Monstero Deliciosa and I don't know if you can see but this is actually the fruit of it. These little uh, conical pods. It takes two years for it to produce a fruit but it is a great tasting fruit. It is a beautiful ground cover. People mistake it for a split split leaf philodendron or a uh, Swiss cheese plant but it's actually not. It's, a, it's in a different family Family. and um, and this is just a great little um, plant that grows in the jungles the fruit produces um, it tastes like mango pineapple and banana all mixed together and a uh, fang tuang and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, carambola so it produces a uh, wonderful carambola they say that this is the sweetest carambola uh, it does not produce the most sugar but what it does is it does have the least amount of um, of oxalic acid that those fruits produce. So it, instead of being a bright yellow carambola, it produces like a pale uh, white, whitish green fruit and it's a delicious fruit. Over here is a Mame Americana and I actually have some a few flowers on it. Um, this is the Redland variety and it's supposed to be a delicious tasting fruit. I've never tasted it because the problem with a lot of these fruits is not only can you flower them, can you grow them, but when to eat them. This is coffee, uh, and yes, this is the same coffee um, that you do drink in your, in your morning. I'm sure these wouldn't be good. I like this plant because it has showy, glossy green leaves. It doesn't get much bigger than eight feet, and it has beautiful white flowers. It has pretty new growth, and when these white flowers, the fruits will actually be little 
bright red fruit. So if you're familiar with what a miracle fruit looks like, the fruit of coffee looks just like that. You pop it in your mouth, it has a decent taste. Um, there's not much fruit to it, but if you do grind the beans, you can actually have coffee. This is, um, this is a rare tree. This was actually here when I bought the house 26 years ago. And it, it always looks like it's on the verge of dying every year, even 26 years ago. But it keeps hanging in there. This is a Japanese raisin tree. And the Japanese raisin is... Um, is a really weird tree. The reason they call it a uh, raisin tree is because the fruit comes off really gnarled and weird and when it dries up and it almost looks like it's rotten, when you eat it it tastes like raisins. So it's really kind of neat. It's, a, it's kind of a novelty tree, not a, not a real big fruit tree. Okay, this is a black jabota kappa. Um, it is a very slow growing fruit from uh, Brazil. It finally looks happy here. I had a little bit of an issue getting it established, but it looks like it's growing now. I probably won't have fruit off of him for four to five years, but it produces a delicious grape-like fruit that'll grow right on the trunk of that tree, which is really nice. So I'm happy he's established well. Uh, one tree over there to the left of him, uh, to the right of him, sorry, is, uh, is a redia, a lemon drop redia. And um, it, I had it growing in a pot that rooted in the ground that I took it out of the pot. I broke the tap root off of him, and he looks like he's struggling a little bit. He's died back at the top, um, but the bottom still looks like it's got some growth, so I'm going to trim that back, and hopefully um, I'll, I'll, I'll get him going again. Um, in the back is an Indian jujube. Um, Indian jujube is a great little tree. Uh, the problem is it doesn't like to stay little. So <laughs> I have a, a hard time trying to keep him uh, small. The reason I keep him right there is because the bees love the flowers of that thing. And when the bees pollinate those flowers, they do such an efficient job, they will produce hundreds and hundreds of those little in fruits. And the jujube fruit tastes like uh, it's about, um, about two inches long and it's about an inch wide and it tastes just like a Granny Smith apple. Last in the, uh, well, last on this side of the front yard is a Maycock uh, sapodilla. It's a dwarf sapodilla. You can see for a little tree here, I have a lot of fruits on it. Um, and it's a, just a great little tree I have. All right, two more trees to talk about in my front yard, and then we'll hit the uh, backyard. This is a uh, peanut butter fruit. Um, it's, uh, it looks a little bit beat up now. It's lost a lot of its leaves, but um, I scratch this and I still see green. And if you're ever unsure if something is dead or not, you can just go to a part of the tree and just do a little bit of scratching of the bark. And if you see a lot of green in there, it means it's still alive. It, um, I, that's why I like this tree. It's a strawberry guava, and, um, and it produces a lot of little red fruits. But like any guava in South Florida, if you're allergic to worms or anything like that, don't get it because it's almost impossible to keep the worms out of this guava. So what I've learned to do is just pop them in my mouth and just know that I've got a little bit of extra natural protein in it because uh, <laughs> there's no way to keep the, uh, the bugs out of this. You can see it produces beautiful flowers and lots of fruits. So it produces nice showy flowers. This is a big hit with the parrots. The parrots love this because the fruits are so plentiful. The parrots are here in mass when this thing is in season. And boy, they will wake you up out of a dead sleep. All right, this is my uh, Mysore raspberry patch. Um, I say patch because this thing spreads and just takes over. It's nice. It is a great little tasting fruit. Um, you can see uh, down here by my hand, I have some fruits that are ripe and some fruits that are not even close to being ripe. It is a great little taste. It tastes like a combination of blackberry, uh, blueberry. This is my yellow cacao. I'm really proud of this tree. Um, I was got really dumb luck in uh, putting it in the right place and discovering uh, its uh, nutritional needs. Uh, I was only one of the few people that I know that was able to have uh, cacao on the tree all year long. And as you can see, I have some yellow pods that are ready for harvesting. I have some green pods that are still a month or so away. And then uh, down here, I actually have some adolescent pods on here. And I even have some flowers flowers on it and some little um, almost infant pods on here. So I have all the stages of growth for cacao happening with this tree. And again, I got lucky because he's in, he's protected by the sun, by the macadamia nut and protected on the other side from strong winds from the house. 
This is my macadamia nut. I've had this tree probably for about 20 plus years. I think it might be a little bit on the decline, but I'm still getting uh, good macadamia. Cindy's uh, focused on one now. The problem with this tree is that if you have squirrels in your area, and I'm sure most of you do, I've, last year I had about 200 plus macadamia nuts on there. Within three days I had zero. Also in this tree, since it's an open type of tree, I also have vanilla growing up in it which is, uh, excuse the jet noise. So um, I have vanilla growing up in there. I, I just recently had a vanilla flower, which is a beautiful yellow flower. I have tried to hand pollinate those without any luck. So I do have vanilla orchid growing in there. I've yet to get a vanilla bean. My understanding is that the pollinator for that does not live in this area. So uh, it's David Harrell getting on a ladder risking his life to try to get some real vanilla. Um, the extract is gonna work for me. This is a Vietnamese soursop that I'm growing out here. I was able to trim around uh, these big mangoes and get, get uh, him or her, I'm not sure, <laughs> enough sun so they can uh, actually grow. I've actually actually had some flowers off of him that I just trimmed because it's not big enough to hold a fruit. Um, so I hope that that'll come to fruition another year or two. Also, I want to point out that for ground cover, I also plant a lot of pineapples. And you can see that I do have pineapples growing. I'll conclude the uh, tour with a uh, little a little testimony to a male procrastination sometimes does pay. I lost this avocado on an unnamed cultivar uh, to Hurricane Irma. I waited a few months. He didn't the the avocado did not shoot up new sprouts. I meant to cut it down. I forgot about it. However, the new shoot started coming up, and recently um, he's flowered.